morning and welcome to ESPN First Take. Today is Tuesday, March 2nd, 2010. I'm Jay Crawford. And I'm Julie Foudy in for Janet Jacobson. From the NBA, the Mavs and Cavs continue to play like it's May. We find out what is making the new look Mavs click and how will the Cavs adjust without Shaq as we get closer to playoff time. Also on today's show, a memo to Bobcats guard Gerald Henderson. Probably not the wisest move beating your new owner in two games of horse, especially when that owner is named Michael Jordan. <laughs> We're going to ask the Charlotte rookie all about it. And Syracuse is the new number one. But are they even the best team in their own city? We talked with the Division II coach who handed the orange a loss before the season even began. That'll be fun. Also, you know the deal. Join us in the chat room. Go to ESPN.com slash first take. Scroll down till you see that your take tab. Click it and we will see you in the chat room. ESPN first take is underway. And coming up, we go from number five to number one. But are the Orange the top team in their own town? We talked to the D2 coach who handed the Orange a preseason loss. Coming up next. The win over Villanova Saturday night. Syracuse improved to 27 and 2 in the Orange now are top the rankings. They are the number one team in the country. But even though many consider the Orange to be the best team in the country, based on head-to-head -head matchups, they may not even be the best team in the city of Syracuse. The Division II Lemoyne Dolphins beat the Cues in an exhibition game. That was way back on November 3rd. And now we are joined by Lemoyne head coach Steve Evans. Coach, thanks for joining us. It's, uh, it's good to see you. How, how does it feel to know that you guys beat the number one team in the country? Uh, it's been an incredible year for us. Uh, you know, we've been pulling for Syracuse. We wanted them to go undefeated all year. Uh, it didn't happen, but uh, just to see the success that they've had and knowing that, uh, that we had one terrific night against them, uh, you know, the game itself was great, but what's happened since then, not a day has gone by where somebody hasn't patted us on the back and congratulated us on the win. Coach, uh, how was it that you were able to do what only two other teams have accomplished all season? Well, I think, you know, Syracuse was still looking for different things. They were playing different players. Uh, they played us man-to-man -man for a majority of the game. We were able to score a lot of layups against Syracuse in the half court. That's something that uh, the 2-3 zone and with their size, it negates for most teams. But, uh, you know, the bottom line is we have a couple kids that are really, really good athletes who can compete at that level. And, and we did. We had a great game. We made shots when we needed to. Even when they went to their zone, uh, I believe they played about 12 possessions of zone. We scored on seven of them. The last play of the game, we scored against their zone. So it just goes to show on any given night, if you make shots, uh, you can beat teams. And that zone defense can be tough to penetrate. Um, there is some talk that you lit the fire under Syracuse that has uh, you know, pushed them all the way to number one. How much credit do you and your guys get for motivating this orange team? Well, I'll tell you what, I, I'm so proud of Syracuse and the character that they've shown this year. Um, you know, you can tell a lot about a team after they lose a game. And I thought uh, after they lost against Louisville the other day to go and have to play Georgetown, the fact that they bounced back from that game and, and it put together another run again speaks to the character of the players and obviously the coaching staff. And if, if our game had something to do with bouncing back from a crushing loss, something that could bring you down, um, I'm happy about that. A lot of people have, have congratulated us on, on lighting that fire, but the bottom line is They've done it every night. They've been prepared every night. And, uh, you know, we've had a little bit to do with that. But more credit goes to the Orange than to the Dolphins, for sure. All right. You guys uh, had your tournament, your first-round tournament game last night. I know it didn't end the way you had hoped. How has your season gone collectively to this point? Well, anytime you start off on a high like, like we did, we didn't expect to go in the Dome and beat Syracuse. Uh, the bar that we set for our team, uh, we had some goals. We were preseason picked to finish fourth in our league. Uh, there's 16 teams in our league. And, uh, you know, to start off that high, all of a sudden, we became, uh, in a sense, like the Duke of uh, our league. Everybody hated us. And uh, chance of overrated every time uh, we got behind. It was a little bit tough for our kids to take early. Uh, we lost a few games that probably we, 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 if we played a little better, I think, uh, you know, we would have won. But bottom line is we didn't. And then I thought our character of our kids showed in mid-January where we strung together eight of our last ten games. And I thought we'd play in our best basketball at the end of the season. And, uh, you know, usually you want to uh, end the season on a high note. Um, we started on a high note and unfortunately losing last night 
Um, hopefully didn't put a, you know, a period to the end of the season. Uh, we're hoping Sunday to get a bid uh, with the NCAA tournament. I don't know how anybody could possibly hate a dolphin. Uh, that, that is your nickname, but we're curious because you're more than 200 miles from the Atlantic Ocean. So how is it that Lemoyne ended up taking the dolphins as its mascot, nickname? Well, the dolphin is uh, it's rooted in uh, you know, Jesuit uh, tradition as far as uh, Catholicism. And also, uh, the bishop at the time um, was very fond of the dolphin. It was actually in his crest. So when the school was founded, that was something that, uh, that they put in there. And it's uh, no one, there, there's, there's not many dolphins uh, that, that are in college basketball. <laughs> so when you think of dolphins, think of Lemoyne and, and come play where there's absolutely no dolphin on our campus at all. <laughs> well, we would hope not. Um, all right, coach, if the, uh, if the NCAA selection committee called you and said, look, to get, a, to get an at-large bid to the Division II uh, tournament, you have to play Syracuse again and you have to beat them. How would that game end up? Well, I, I would hope uh, the same way, you know. Uh, I, we have great kids. I have a feeling that we might be able to pack the dome and, and get even more people than they had against Villanova. Um, and I just think our kids would come out there. They'd make every shot like they did the last time we played Syracuse. We'd defend them. Routens wouldn't be able to make a shot, and the only guy that would play good would be Wes Johnson. So if Syracuse can <laughs> pick up their end of the deal and, and we go out there and do what we did last time, we'll take, it. We'll take the rematch, absolutely. We love the confidence coach look uh, thanks for coming on a and good luck Sunday when the bids are handed out we certainly hope you get uh, you get your invitation thank you pleasure to be on this morning all right and don't forget we have a super Tuesday of men's college basketball for you that's tonight on ESPN skips Vanderbilt Commodores take on Florida at 7 Eastern time Big game. then at 9 Eastern it's the main event it's Ohio State going for that biggie, our Big Ten yeah. regular season Bubbles title. everywhere. This is Sports Center. Has anyone knocked themselves out of the first round? Who helped and hurt his draft status the most today at the NFL Combine? And why a bottle of wine may be the beginning of a new vintage NFL rivalry? Has LeBron tipped his hand? PTI debates his decision to change his jersey number. And why a Team USA hockey hero is at the center of his own debate tonight? Selection Sunday, 12 days away, who the fourth number one seed will be and why, and how to beat the top team in the country from a small school coach who did it. All right, guys, thank you. Let's go to number one now in college basketball. The top three losing this weekend, so the Orange men ascend to the number one spot in the nation looking very good now 27 and 2 and number one in the ESPN USA Today coaches poll so Syracuse cruising through D1 but you may recall they were beaten by a local club in D2 in November it was an exhibition but Lemoyne of upstate New York shook up the Orangemen beating them 82 79 just before the season started we asked coach of Lemoyne Steve Evans how did you beat those guys the first thing you have to do is you have to make shots. Uh, at Syracuse is easier to defend when they're taking the ball out of the basket. It's easier said than done against the zone, but uh, you got to have some set plays and you got to look at what some other people have done to beat Syracuse. Um, you know, there, there are weaknesses in the zone, but they're hard to find when Syracuse is as long as they are. Uh, and then offensively, uh, you have to get a shot. Anytime you get good shots against Syracuse, uh, you got a chance to score. You also got good balance to get back on defense. They, they rebound the ball extremely well and push it down the floor better than anyone in the country. If you don't get back on defense and make Syracuse play five on five, you're in, you're in store for a long night. All right, Steve Evans of LeMoyne with his analysis there. Syracuse, not orange men anymore? Just orange. orange? Yeah. What about, old, you want, what about red, red men? They're gone too? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Big East 1980s. Yeah. Syracuse played seven games this season against ranked teams. They've won all seven by an average of 13 points. I believe you just missed that. Three of the row games, two are at neutral sites. The Orange have just two games <laughs> left in the regular season. See, I can evolve. Bracketologist Joe Lenardi, last four in, last four out.